Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, Voices of South Africa's Born Free Generation. We're asked what the youth of a post-apartheid state want for their country's future. You know what? It's not often I break out this. <laughs> it's my little happy dance because our digital producer Malika Malau is back. I'm glad we got that on camera. <laughs> yeah. Finally, we missed you. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Now get to work. I yeah, and you know what? The work's already been done for me because good. there's lots online about this. One of the hashtags we noticed today was Vote Home SA. Sure. That's a hashtag that people are using because there's 26 thousand people in 123 different countries who are voting from abroad for the South African elections for next week. So this one is out of the UK where you can see uh, the eye of London there. Uh, this one is showing us for a from China where people voted first two voters in China so that's abroad we're going to the streets of South Africa in today's show we can't do it without you tweet us your thoughts your comments your questions with hashtag AJStream now Twitter is not the only way that you can take part in this conversation you can also do it via video and webcam so go to stream.azura.com and there you will find a little section saying your voices press the record button here you can record your video even not even on your laptop or your computer even if your phone if your phone is smart enough and then you can just record your message and you too can be in the stream and part of this conversation. I'm Brent Willett, I'm an economic developer from Iowa and I'm in the stream. They're called South Africa's born free generation and next week's general elections mark the first in which these young voters born after the end of apartheid will coast cast a ballot. 20 years ago, the African National Congress, or ANC, came into power when Nelson Mandela became the first black South African president. The ANC has won every general election since then, but while political rights have dramatically changed in the country, some argue that economic rights for all have not been achieved. Issues like unemployment and inequality have many young people in South Africa concerned about their future. So, ahead of next week's vote, we want to hear the perspectives of South Africa's youth and talk about how their ideas might impact the nation. To help us talk about this, we have Kelly Beloy. She's a student and a youth activist in Cape Town. In Durban, we have Levi Singh. He's an advocate for youth issues and a youth advisor to the UN Population Fund. And Khadija Patel is a journalist and a managing editor of the website South Africa Votes 2014. She's joining us via Skype in Johannesburg. So it's great to have you all here in the stream. Let me start off with Kelly. Kelly, you're going to vote for the yes. first time next week. Yes. Ah, oh, firstborn generation. What does that even <laughs> mean? How would you describe yourself? Uh, a freedom baby. <laughs> you know, I'm actually really excited to vote this year. I was actually looking forward for the past three years. I'm like, when am I going to vote? When's 2014 voting coming? I just want to vote. So I just feel that, that I'm a freedom baby and, and what my ancestors fought for, I'm, I'm that product. And it, it is, like I said, like they say that your vote is a selfish thing that you may do, may, may have. So I feel that really that I owe it to those that fought back then for my freedom to vote. See, this is a whole generation. It's a whole load of young people yeah. who were born after 1994, which also yeah. includes you, Levi. So I'm just interested yeah. to see, do you, does that resonate what Kelly says or do you have a different perspective of what your generation is for South Africa? Um, I'd say I'm really optimistic about voting in this election. I've looked forward to participating within an election and exercising my democratic right since I was in primary school. Um, voting is a huge task, it's also a huge responsibility, and it's something that uh, we as all South Africans should take part in, uh, especially as young people. Um, you look at the African continent, 70% uh, of the African continent's population are under 30, so basically the future of Africa and South Africa relies on our shoulders and what we do at our vote. See, Khadija, I'm, I'm concerned that, that Kelly there and Levi there and all of their uh, Oh, compatriots, they all have this incredible responsibility. Everybody is just watching them to see what they do next. Is that even possible for them to take that on? 
It is almost unfair, and I think the scrutiny that has been placed on the born free generation in the run-up to this election has in some ways been unfair, uh, because these are uh, very young people themselves, and um, I think that some of the expectations from this generation have been unfairly placed. Um, like other young people around the world, some of them are apathetic, so, uh, but I, and you know, in some, in, in, in some quarters, this, you know, this trend of apathy among some born frees is misinterpreted as you know being uh, you know being uh, you know relevant to the whole generation, which I think is quite incorrect. I think that it is a mixed picture that um, we have to realize that not all born frees, although they you know they are one generation, they uh, they have the common starting point of being born after the uh, you know the ninety four general election. They do all still have different experiences, and that South Africa, mm. though though we are you know twenty years after democracy, we are still um, you know a very divided country economically. We are still a very unequal society. So um, you know there is no uh, you know cohesive born free generation there are you know different experiences that make up this born free generation sure. and i think that is the beauty of south africa yeah. that you know yeah. that we are a multiplicity of experience so kelly and, and yeah. levi both nodding kelly you go first yeah the thing is the misconception there's a misconception when young people say that you know they want to forget the past and they want to move forward it's the thing that many of the born fees and i would say many of the young people they are frustrated because they feel that we are we are we are heading towards a a, a we're seeing these problems a eh? and the thing is the, the strategies using the past cannot be used now now like she said there's a lot of inequality amongst the amongst uh, many south africans so kelly and i'm just gonna ask that, you, you know, to take a pause for a moment because for anybody who's not been to south africa who doesn't know south africa at all give us an yeah. example of what that inequality actually means well basically like uh, education um you know we have schools that bad facilities and then we have schools that you know have good facilities and the standard of education amongst you know like in the disadvantaged areas and in the privileged areas so there is really inequality education wise economic wise and if you look at june 16th i don't know uh, june 16 is where our young people fought for um june 16 1976 where our young people fought for equal education and adequate education and now we 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 at the crossroad at the same problem, but like I said, we can't fight with the same strategies that we fought then for sure. now. But I feel that our young people now have the same heart like the young people in 1976. It's just that we need that strategy that's in. Listen here, this is the issue, this is the problem. Okay. Let's fight it together. All right, uh, Levi, hold that thought for a moment. I'm just going to go back to Malika in the community. Well, Femi, you were asking for a d definition of what born free means to people. Mm. Our community responded. We got this tweet from Sifa Manla just a few minutes ago. He says the term born free remains contested, but those like me, he's referencing himself, born after 1990, who haven't lived through the apartheid era, he says that's what it means. Now, this apartheid is something that, of course, a lot of people are bringing up. Um, Patrick tweets in, the transition from apartheid to a full democracy, equal opportunity is complete, he says. The impact of apartheid now is insignificant. Levi, I want your thoughts on that because uh, the person who tweeted in a little bit earlier, Sifa Mandla, he responded. He says, even amongst us of the born free generation who enjoy the trap entrapments of freedom, apartheid legacies still prevent integration. So to what extent do you feel, Levi, that apartheid uh, impacts your generation? That's very much true. Um, both of the previous, uh, Katija and Kelly, brought up issues of inequality. You look at the state of our uh, economy, 67% of the, the national money that is within the privatized companies is uh, owned by 67% of white people. Um, the average CEO earns 998,000 rand. Uh, and most of the CEOs are white people, so we, we can't say that the impacts of apartheid are almost insignificant when we're still feeling the repercussions 20 years after apartheid. So let me welcome mm -hmm. to the conversation Anna Seiko, and Anna is a multimedia journalist. She also works with Global Girl Media. Anna, it's great to have you join us. I know there's slightly some, some technical issues, but I'm glad you're with us right now. If we were looking up from your perspective as a young voter, what is the most important issue for you in South Africa right now? Uh, the most important issue is getting the right person to vote for 
that person who won't uh, backstep us or make empty promises. See, that suggests that that maybe somewhere along the line there are politicians in South Africa that are backstabbing and offering empty empty promises. Are you basing that on something? Oh yes, I am. Because if you look on, um, this is our 20th anniversary, um, ever since we had our freedom. Uh, the only thing when we look back within the 20 years to see what the ANC has done for us, definitely I could say nothing much but uh, simply small RDP houses that I can compare to a size of a toilet. And um, they've done nothing much but uh, eat holes that we need to pay for the road. Uh, the Riavaya buses that we, we are told that we, we cannot drive on that road because we are not paying. Khadija, I see a slight smile there. <laughs> What's behind that? Yes. Um, yeah, we, uh, uh, I think that um, she's brought up some of the burning issues in this election, particularly uh, when it comes to the standard of services that have been provided to South Africans. The ANC has, you know, come out uh, reminding South Africans that, you know, that they have, uh, you know, given services to communities, uh, services, basic services like electricity and water, indeed even, uh, you know, housing uh, to communities that never had these services, you know, during apartheid. Um, but uh, you know, one criticism of you know of this campaign tactic from the ANC is that uh, while you know while no one can contest the fact that the ANC has definitely you know unrolled these services in many many communities, and uh, I think we've got to be fair as well that the ANC has done well in you know in some respect is that uh, you know in other res you know in other aspects the, the you know the quality of the services that have been provided have been exposed to be absolutely shoddy where uh, you know. The, you know, it may be boasted that so-and-so community now has running water, but you have a situation where 20 families are sharing one tap. And this is 20 years after democracy, and I, don't, and I think that, you know, we as South Africans expect better. We want the best for our country, for our people. Mm. And, um, yeah. I, and I, 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 and I under understand right. that, uh, you know, that it is quite difficult for the ruling party to do everything at once. And I, but I don't think that everyone, uh, you know, that, that anyone is being unrealistic now is that uh, people have had patience for the last 20 years, but their expectations, their demands for, um, you know, for a decent life in South Africa are growing louder. Sure. sure. So, Levi, I mean, Levi, I, I, I hear you disagreeing there with Khadija, but it's not like you've been waiting 20 years. You're barely 20 years old right now. So what is it that you want for South Africa? Well, basically, it would all come down to uh, bridging the divide in terms of inequality. Um, as, as it stands, South Africa is one of the most unequal societies to live in in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a youth unemployment rate of um, 7 out of 10 youth are unemployed. That accounts for 70% of youth being unemployed. Mm -hmm. And as our population expands, it's, it's going to get worse. So if we don't start to curb the divide and bring down the inequality and start to take poverty and inequality issues and basically the demons of apartheid seriously, we aren't going to um, live in a prosperous nation that we can all be proud and happy of. Sure. Yeah. See, Levi, if, I, if I'm watching this and yeah. I'm a South African politician watching the stream right now, I'd be saying, yes, well, it's all very well to criticise, but how would you do it, young born freeze? You've got all mm. the answers. What would you say? Well, for one, we can look at um, the issue of nationalisation of the land. Um, why does the government have to go back and buy land that was forced to be taken from um, uh, people that lived under apartheid, uh, African people. Look at the, the mining industry. Are we, um, are we using our resources adequately? Why are we exporting stuff and basically buying it back at higher prices? Why aren't we doing things within our house that can serve the rest of the people within mm. our borders? Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a, that's I a good question. I hear an answer. Go for it. And then I'm going to go to this tweet. Go ahead. I just want to say that, like you said, 
uh, what the bone freeze can do, you know, that it's important for us, you know, our leaders back then fought for our liberation. Now we have the ability to liberate ourselves educationally. Now we can also liberate ourselves politically. And that is the duty of a bone free generation is that we need to educate ourselves on issues that is happening in our country so that we can put our input. And my problem is just that. It's not, I'm not criti uh, criticizing any, um, any political party or the government. I'm just saying that they need to close that gap. That is very important. And the only way they can close that gap is they, when they relate to us and when they adapt to us. And that's the thing. Political parties need to learn. They will fail if they don't adapt to the young generation. And I feel that really that we need to close that gap. Amongst uh, um, between the older generation and the young generation. Sure. Basically, well, the speaking of closing that gap, government. Kelly. Speaking of closing the gap, you you mentioned educating uh, uh, the youth, educating themselves. Khadija, I know that you're working on a project to do just that. But what I want to bring up here is something uh, that you mentioned a little bit earlier: service delivery. And as you were saying it, we got in several tweets from people at the same time saying something like this. Jared says service delivery has been a huge issue for many young South Africans, and after 20 years, it's not enough. Masiha writes in service delivery, health, sanitation, education, job creation. Those are the things she wants to see solved. Khadija, there are a, a lot of people bringing up the issues and the problems. How would you go about changing them? Okay, so one thing that, you know, any analysis or any conversation about South African politics or, um, must, you know, must take into account as well is that South Africa is the protest capital of the world. Every day in South Africa since 2008, South Africa experiences something called service delivery protests, where you have entire communities, uh, you know, taking to the streets to protest uh, against a lack of basic service delivery, or sometimes um, against a corrupt councillor, against you know corrupt uh, you know local government officials. Um, so, and this has been a constant occurring since 2008 until now and if anything um, I ha I'm yet to see very very recent statistics but the last statistics I saw you know properly researched academic um, statistics show that these the number of these protests right. are increasing month on month sure. so there is a app there is a demand for better services among so you know among South African communities so this is not a um, Certainly, you know these pro you know these protests point to the fact that this is not an a apathetic population. But at the same time, the fact that you know these pop you know these communities have to actually go to the extremes of burning tires in the streets, often you know even bur burning down public facilities like libraries and schools to get attention, to get, get the to media to cover the, to cover the mm -hmm. you know to cover their grievances points also to some you know something of a failure of the democratic process in South Africa that many people feel excluded um, and isolated from the right. political processes in South Africa and I think that as uh, us at South Africa Votes 2014 have even uh, you know spoken to people around the country many people who say that you know they're not voting this time because they feel that their vote does not make a difference so there is somewhat of a disillusionment as well Katija, with the democratic Katija, process. Take, take a for a moment I just want to play this this little ad here celebrities of South Africa they're young they're attractive they're successful they have a message for the born freeze have a listen to this I vote SA. Why do you vote? My vote is my voice. Voting is still the most critical voice any citizen has. Ik vote van is bevangen. You vote. I vote because I want to use my voice. Choice is what I have. Any citizen has. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Vote South Africa. I am voting. I get to vote. You are not voting. Why? What's your why? Look. I'm gonna get a free day. Come on. Nice. <laughs> IEC. I vote South Africa. Well, that's a sexy little ad there, Anna. How are the politicians wooing you as a young generation, these first time voters? You don't even have a track record for voting yet. How are they getting to you? Oh, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. This is what they do. Um, for our elders, what they do is they buy them blankets. They give them a food puzzles. For me, it will be like they are buying their favor to vote for them, which is particularly that uh, party called ANC. But for the youth, we don't see much engagement from the parties to say, okay, this is, we, this is what we're going to do for the youth, for them to, to join us. But the only thing that they are, they are repeating is each other's views that we're going to 
create jobs. Because, but practically speaking, we don't see that happening. So right. what they are doing is they are making promises, but we know that at the end of the day, once we have voted, they're just going to shut off and mm. forget about us. Levi, how are you being wooed? Is, that, is somebody after your vote right now? Yeah, well, there's quite a number of parties that are after my vote. Um, it's amazing the tactics that most of political parties are using, especially the prominent ones. Um, the ANC is saying uh, that you should defend Madiba's legacy by voting ANC, so it's kind of emotional blackmail that you should do it for Mandela, um, generalizing him as an ANC icon rather than a South African icon. And then we have uh, smaller parties like uh, the Minority Front, which is being catered in. They're saying do it for um, their deceased leader, which was Mr. Raj Bansi. Then you have the African Democratic uh, Christian Party, the ACDP, and uh, they're saying vote for God because God wants us to vote. So wow. uh, you have very, very so many decisions to make. Being so little time mm. to make it in. Kelly, just wrap us up for now for this main show before we go to the post show. So how is your vote being wooed? Is anyone persuading you to go one way or another yet? Definitely, they are persuading me, but I just want to look at the whole that one, this 1.9 million born frees estimated and only to between 12 and 15 percent of them are registered to vote. So the fact that young people weren't, you know, willing to register, that means the political parties haven't word the, you know, the majority of, majority of the born freeze. So I'm actually at the crossroad. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Like, and I'm thinking, what is going on? Because about three months ago, I knew who I was going to vote for. Mm. But now I'm at the crossroad. I'm thinking, what am I going to do? So. I'm hoping for the best, <laughs> make up my mind soon, but definitely a vote I'm going to give. That is Kelly Beloy. She is a young born free from South Africa, giving her uh, giving us her perspective on the upcoming elections. We also speak to Levi Singh, Anna Seiko is with us, and also Khadija Patel. We are taking them all to the post show at stream.outazira.com. But before we get there, here's Maliko, some of the other stories the stream is keeping an eye on. Well, we start in South Africa, where the sports minister's comments criticizing Kenya's Olympic teams have sparked a virtual war on Twitter. Vikile Mbalula was responding to a question about racial quotas in sport when he reportedly told a press briefing that South Africa won't be like Kenya and send athletes to, quote, drown in the pool, unquote. Well, Kenyans and South Africans exchanged angry tweets after the incident using hashtags, someone tell South Africa and someone tell Kenya. Isaiah in Kenya tweets, someone tell South Africa that our athletes are our pride. We need an apology. In South Africa, some distance themselves from the minister. Sheik tweets, someone tell Kenya, trust me when I say, we don't all share our leadership sentiment. Next, netizens are remembering prominent Egyptian blogger and civil rights activist Bassem Sabri, who passed away Tuesday under unclear circumstances. Arash tweets, I always felt Egypt was so lucky to have Bassem, as if his gentle soul would make everything okay. Nirvana tweets, Bassem had the ability to win the hearts of everyone, regardless of political affiliation. Now finally, hundreds of demonstrators in Nigeria have marched to the capital Abuja. They demanded the release of more than 200 schoolgirls abducted by armed men on April 14th. Nigerians are using hashtag bring back our girls, urging the government to do more to secure their release. Thanks to our community for pitching this story. Now, if you have a story idea, send it our way using hashtag AJStream. Femi? So, we had our own little adventure with South Africa's sports minister. We did. And we were doing a show about sports quotas mm -hmm. in South Africa, and he was all ready to go, and we did the sound check, and then he left the studio. I remember it very clearly. I am still disappointed. Me too. Hashtag as far as our audience. <laughs> yes. He, he's since, of course, made comments that they can respond to. Yes. Yeah, so if you see the sports minister in South Africa, someone tell him that uh, we would love to have him on the stream one day. So meanwhile, Moving on, what will we be doing on our next AJ stream? Well, on Thursday, we speak with a man of many hats and fashions. Comedian, aspiring politician, and action transvestite, Eddie Izzard joins us to take your questions live. You don't want to miss it. Until then, we'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Welcome back. This is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about the post-apartheid generation in South Africa and listening to their thoughts on the country's future. So let's get right back to that conversation. But via my laptop, have a look at it. It's the Electoral Commission of South Africa website. It tells you how to register. It tells you the parties and the candidates. Let me show you the national candidates here. I'm just going to scroll down here. 29 I counted. And then we've got provincial elections scrolling down here. So there are a lot of options and a lot of parties to pick from. From, or are there, Anna? Do you feel like you have a lot of choice? Yes, I do feel okay. like um, I have a lot of choice, but um, with limited, um, or what you call parties, that can make a difference. There can be a lot of them, but they won't make a difference. Only one or two of them are serious about uh, what they promise. Like, for an example, I'll speak of Akhang. Akhang is, is led by a woman, and I feel that a woman has got stronger qualities to lead a nation. Because if you can bear a child, nature a child, why not nature a nation? But so the inequality that... Yeah, but, but, but Anna, that's, that's, that's a biological function. Aren't you more concerned about what she's thinking and how qualified she is and how able she is to do the job, not just the fact that she's a woman? Although yeah, I do agree the, with you. Yeah, yeah, not the, the fact that she's a woman. Yeah. But um, that's why we have campaigns like take, take a girl to school. Yeah. Because once we are educated, we'll be able to think for others. Like, like for an example, if you can look at all, our, all most of our political parties, they are led by a man. And right. so far, I don't see any party that is making a difference because a man is leading. But mm -hmm. how about we give a chance to a woman and a woman leads and we see what happens? Sure. Um, Kelly, do you feel that there's a lot of choice for you to pick from? You said three months ago you decided and now you're undecided and elections are next week. There is a lot of political parties <laughs> and I feel that it's kind of unnecessary to have so much parties because they, the country focuses only on top the five, you know. So the rest, nobody actually really looks at their parties. And if you look at the seats that they have available in Parliament, it's actually little, so they kind of don't have... Okay, we've, we've, we've frozen Kelly there for a moment, not on purpose, but it's a good point to jump into the community and see what they're talking about. Because they have a lot to say. So we're yeah. talking about options, and, and there's one view here on Twitter. Masiha writes in that the ANC, the ruling party, might have its flaws, but other parties are just extremely small to make a significant impact. On the other hand, we have uh, an opposite kind of comment. This is in the form of a video comment. Levi, have a listen to this person's view. I will be a first-time voter in the coming national and provincial elections in South Africa and I'm very proud to say that I'll be voting for the Democratic Alliance. The DA offers jobs and the DA offers change and that means a bright future for South Africa. So Levi, the DA versus the ANC versus some of the smaller parties, how would you rate all of those parties' campaigns in appealing to you as a member of the Born Free generation? Well, um, I look at all of the uh, campaigns and they're all quite impressive, uh, especially the ANC one in terms of um, giving the youth some sort of assurance with a track record. Um, the catchphrase is they have a good story to tell. And the, the good story is it's kind of assuring to know that you might just vote in the, the same government, have to deal with the problems of the previous administration, but make some sort of progress. Whereas you look at the DA, they can't even provide toilets for the people that live in the Western Cape. Cape Town is a wonderful city, but you look at townships, uh, impoverished communities outside of Cape Town called Kailisha and Guguletu. And just today there were poop protests. They marched all the way into Cape Town and to just show their dissatisfaction with the DA-led government, they started throwing uh, feces around because they don't have simple things like toilets. How can you trust uh, a political party like that to govern an entire country when they can't manage one problem? Yeah, I'm just looking here at a website called South Africa Votes 14. Khadija, you recognize yes. this website. You're part of this whole campaign, this effort, this push. I want to get a sense of what the voting atmosphere is like amongst younger people, the younger generation, just a few days out before this big election. 
I think crucially, um, you know, some young South Africans remain undecided about who to vote for. Some are very excited and have known who they're going to to vote for months ago. As someone put it uh, a few, uh, you know, last week, I think on Twitter, that um, it's almost as if, uh, you know, supporting a political party is like supporting a football team. Um, you know, the kind of gusto and loyalty some people show any, you know, one particular uh parties you know is almost uh you know the way they sh- you know sh- support a uh, you know a football team and no matter what stick with them so there it is a mixed picture while other people are ready to be persuaded it is definitely a mixed picture but i think that it is um you know also very very ex- you know a very exciting time for south africa um this is south africa after all we do realize how you know how hard it was to win this right to vote but we also know 20 years now that it was not just the you know the functionary nature of democracy that we've won we did we didn't just win the right to go to the polls every five years to put a cross next to someone's face that what you know what what has to happen within the next 20 years are very real concerns need to be addressed. Then, um, as I think it was Levi who brought up the issue of land, and I think that this, the issue of land and land ownership in South Africa goes to the very core of uh, you know, of South Africa's inequality. It goes to the very core, core of not only apartheid, but more than 200 years of colonialism. And sure, these are the kind of things that need to be addressed within the next 20 years. It will take, um, you know, uh, some political world uh, to do so. But I th- And I think that um, the political party and the politicians who are best able to address these concerns in a way that resonate with young South Africans will be the politician to take South Africa forward. Right. But you left that blank. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Malika. Yeah, that's a, a dot, dot, dot. Yes. I mean, I want to take us, um, you know, kind of full circle here. Mm-hmm. We started off talking about what is the born free generation. Mm. At the end of our main show, so this was at 3.53 p.m. Okay. our time, yes. this is what one person wrote in. Ah. Most born frees are politically naive. They're ignorant. They're lobotomized. I'm pessimistic about their influence. They live in platitudes. I know our guests might want to push back on that, but I want to play this video comment first. Um, have a listen to this, Kelly. I'd like you to give us your closing thoughts after you hear this. Hi, my name is Steph, greeting you from South Africa. With elections looming, I don't believe that the youth of South Africa fully understand the impact that they could have on the current political landscape within South Africa. This may be due to the overwhelming challenges and pressures that we now face as a young person living in this day and age. There have also been many reports on the lack of interest that young South Africans have in voting, and this may be because of the lack of promises that have been met in the past. In my personal experience, I've seen a greater interest in my group of friends in getting involved in the process and wanting to actually make a difference. So Kelly, this video comment pushes back against that tweet. She says her friends do want to make a difference. Do you agree? Unfortunately, I didn't hear the um, video. That's okay, Kelly. I can sum it up for you. Basically, she says that people, uh, the youth may not understand the impact that they can have, but among her circle of friends, they know the power that their vote has. Would you yeah. say the same is true for you and your friends? Uh, honestly, we really believe it's all about your pride for your country. You know, we, we, we are South Africans first and we choose a political party. And, and we shouldn't focus our, our, our energy and, you know, and our minds on, on, on the parties. We should actually think of us as South Africans. That is the most important thing. And if young people can just instill their pride back in their country, then, you know, we can move forward. We have a bright future forward. And I feel that amongst me and my friends, I mean, we see ourselves as South Africans. And that's what makes us pride, proud. And that's what instills the pride back in us. So for other young people, for the other born friends that's not registered and that, you know, they're just throwing a blind eye, if you can just think back, sit back and think, I'm a South African, you know, and there's many people that kind of want to be South Africans, but you are South African, so you need to instill that pride back into your country as a young born free. I can't think of a better way to end this conversation with Kelly nagging young South Africans to get out and vote. I like that. (laughs) Kelly Valoy, Levi Singh, Anna Seiko and Khadija Patel, thank you very much for being guests on this conversation. And I wish you the very best of luck with your elections coming up on May the 7th. Now, on the next show, comedian and aspiring politician Eddie Izzard joins us to take your questions. You don't want to miss it. See you next time. Thanks for watching.